Hi and welcome to 1.2 Engineering Notebook. For this lesson, you will need an engineering notebook. Overview, we're going to talk about what is an engineering notebook, why keep an engineering notebook, who keeps an engineering notebook, the contents of that notebook, engineering notebook sections, standard page layout, best practices, and we'll even show you some historical examples. By the way, this is from Project Lead the Way Engineering 2012 PowerPoint that I adapted for this video. So what is an engineering notebook? An engineering notebook is a book in which an engineer will formally document in chronological order all of their work that is associated with a specific design project. It is a clear and detailed description of your design process, and it's made in such a way that someone unfamiliar with your work could take over your project without any additional information. So imagine how thorough your engineering notebook has to be for that to happen. Why keep an engineering notebook? An engineering notebook is, a rec is recognized as a legal document that is used to patent uh, different products. So you want to prove the origin of an idea that led to a solution, prove when events or ideas occurred, prove diligence in turning the idea into a solution, and prove when an idea become, became a working solution, uh, which they call reduced to practice. So this is important. If you come up with a great idea this year, you want to write it down in pen in your engineering notebook, and then that's recognized as a legal document that says, hey, this is my original idea, and you can't steal it from me. I'm going to make my own money because it's my idea, as proved by this legal document. So who uses an engineering notebook? Engineers that work on research and development, otherwise known as R&D. Um, it's, like I said, a legal documentation of work, and it shows continuity in projects. Engineering students also use these notebooks, high school and college students. Um, it helps them develop time management skills. Uh, it improves research documentation and communication skills. So just like you learned how to read and write earlier in your school careers, now you're getting uh, more precise in how you're documenting your research and you're getting better at your communication skills. It's a basis for professional presentation of work. You want to be very thorough. So typical contents of an engineering notebook include discovering the problem, research, sketches with labels and descriptions, brainstorming, calculations, your daily thoughts and ideas, pictures, Expert input, including the names, positions, contact information, and details of your conversations with that person. Uh, work session and meeting summaries. Test procedures, results, and conclusions. Digital, techno uh, digital technical drawings and design modifications. It's basically everything you do or think related to a specific design project. Like I said, you want to be very thorough when writing in your engineering notebook. These sections of an engineering notebook include a title page, table of contents, general chronological entries, references, and business and expert contacts. So you're going to, today at the end of this PowerPoint, you're going to uh, write your title page and your table of contents and set up the first page for entry. The standard page layout is uh, quad ruled paper. All, all pages are numbered, dated, signed by the designer, signed by a witness, include a statement of the proprietary nature of the notebook. Um, all the page numbers should be in the top outside corners. That's the convention that we'll use in this class. Okay, important to remember that. All work is in pen. Markers that bleed through the paper are never used because you don't want it to bleed through so that it's on the opposite opposite side. Pages are sequentially numbered in ink on the top outside edge, as I said before. Uh, the notebooks are bound so that you can't add pages and you cannot remove pages. It cannot be a binder. Best practices. Entries, entries begin at the top of the page, working left to right and top to bottom. Do not leave any blank space. If there's extra space and you're ready to move on to the next page, you have to draw an X or a line across it and sign it. Otherwise, people can come in and put in other stuff and kind of undermine your work. If you make a mistake, draw a line through it, enter the correct information, and initial the change. Never erase or remove anything. This is going to 
you could use this for all of your classes. This is perfectly acceptable to cross out a mistake. A lot of times I see students doing one of these. It's like, oh no, don't look at this horrible mistake I made. Your teachers don't care that you made a, made a mistake. They're happy that you make some mistakes. And then they're like, oh, you learned that it should be like that instead, for example, okay? Don't be ashamed of your mistakes and spend all your time crossing it off like a crazy person. Um, just put a line through it and then that, leave it at that. Put a line through it, correct it, and then this is the initial so that you know you're the person who did it instead of somebody come along, coming along and crossing out all your stuff. If you put your initial there, it's a way to show I'm the one who deleted this from the entry. Uh, you want to date each entry. So every time you write in the book for that day, you want to put in a date. All right, that might be different from a previous date on that page. That is fine. Inserted items are permanently attached. Glue is preferred. Uh, you can use tape if you only have tape um, and no loose leaf items. So you can't just fold it up and tuck it in the page so that it could fall out later. It has to be attached somehow. So um, this year we did 1.3, the shoe sketch first. So you have sketches on loose leaf. You're gonna practice taping or gluing them into the first section of your engineering notebook. And that's totally fine. That's a common practice. Uh, if you're out at a restaurant somewhere and you get an idea for something and you want to sketch it on a little napkin, you sketch it on the napkin and then later on you can uh, add it to your um, engineering notebook or draw it, redraw it in there. So you're going to sign your name so that it extends across both the notebook page and the inserted document as shown here so that if it's removed, you can see on the remaining page your partial signature, and then you're like, wait a second, somebody took my original image out. You wanna sign and date each page before the next page is started. A colleague or mentor should corroborate the events and facts on each page and sign it as a witness. That way, in case somebody does try to tamper with your notebook, you can go back and find that person and be like, hey, you witnessed this, it's different from what I, what, what I wrote there, right? And then, then it's a legal document. If you need to go to court, they would be your witness. Store the notebook in a safe location so that this doesn't happen and people aren't tampering with your work. Sketches, label all parts of the sketch and describe each sketch. Look how thorough this is, okay? Any idea that you have with regards to your sketch can be added in. Um, and then look at all this detail over here. Okay, don't just draw a random sketch so that even you don't know what you were trying to convey later on. If needed, add some annotations and labels. Calculations and figures are clearly labeled as shown here. Progress entries reflect on tasks accomplished, successes and failures reflect on future needs and tasks to be completed. This is a great life skill. You wanna be able to reflect on what worked and what didn't work so that you can learn from your mistakes and your successes in the future. In this class, we're gonna do a lot of reflections. So get into the practice of thinking about what you did in the past and how it can be improved. Be neat. Be accurate, be legible, and be thorough. Like I said before, you've already learned how to read and write through your school experience. Now's the time to put it into practice and be as precise as possible with these engineering notebooks. Here are some examples. This is a page from Earl Silas Tupper's 19, he was born 1907, died in 1983, Invention, Diary, and Sketchbook. Mr. Tupper developed a wide range of inventions, including Tupperware. So in this, it's showing a paint pot. You can see because he clearly labeled it, and you can see all the labels on the side. You could pause the video and try to read it if you want. Here's another example of Everett Huckle Bickley, original design notes for an electromechanical flycatcher from 1943, that sounds pretty cool. Mr. Bickley developed dozens of inventions. His most lucrative invention was a bean sorting machine that separated good beans from bad. People do this stuff, you know, they come up with these ideas to make other people's lives easier to solve problems and they document it in their engineering notebooks so they could get money for it. 
Howard Head, originally designed at, for an oversized tennis racket in 1974. The larger racket more than doubled the sweet spot of the traditional racket. Head is a very popular um, sporting goods company. Now it's time to start your very own engineering notebook. Take out those composition notebooks you got from class. On the very front, we're going to make our title page, and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is put your first name and your last name, and then you write IED period, whatever period you are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, then 2020 dash 2021, just like that. You open the front cover. On that very first page on the right, you're going to write your table of contents. So write down table of contents like that. And then your first entry is going to be shoe sketch, if you want to call it 1.3 shoe sketch. That's totally fine. So you write the name of the entry on the left hand side, and then you can make some dots over to the page number. So it's going to start on page number one. So set that up, pause the video, set that up. Then I want you to turn the page. Leave these two pages blank so that if you need to, you can continue your table of contents onto these pages. Then turn the page again. And now you can make your first entry. Number the pages on the upper outside corners. So number one goes there, and then page two will go over here, okay? And then you're going to write the title, shoe sketch, or if you wrote 1.3 shoe sketch, write 1.3 shoe sketch. Then what you should do is take your sketches that you already have, uh, because this year we did the sketches first while we handed out the notebooks. Um, so if you did your sketch on a separate sheet, I want you to cut it out and then either glue it in if possible, and then sign over both of the pages, the cut in page and the engineering notebook page, or you could tape it in and do the same thing. So it would look something like this. Here's your glued in sketch. I guess I should make a sketch. Something like that. Yours is better than mine. Uh, you could either glue it in or you can tape it in. And then you want to sign across like this signing across so that it's on both sides of the document that you just pasted in there. And now you're ready to document all your great ideas in your engineering notebook for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching and have a great day.